In Go, channels provide a robust way to handle concurrent tasks and manage communication between Go routines. The Ordun and T channels are advanced channel patterns that simplify stopping multiple Go routines and duplicating channel values. Let's explore these patterns and see a practical example of their usefulness. Let's use a scenario of broadcasting transaction data for different processing pipelines as an example to understand these patterns. In this scenario, we'll assume that transaction data is being streamed in real time, and we need to handle it in two ways. The first way is the fraud detection pipeline. It monitors transactions for unusual patterns, which may signal fraudulent activity. The data is also sent to Customer Analytics Pipeline, which analyzes transaction trends to understand customer behavior. By using the T-channel pattern, we can split the transaction data so that each pipeline receives and processes the same data independently. Additionally, we will use the OR DONE pattern to allow a graceful shutdown of both pipelines if any error or cancellation signal occurs ensuring that resources are freed up appropriately. Without further ado, let's dive into code. We begin by implementing the OR DONE function. This function accepts two channels, a DONE channel to signal cancellation and an INPUT channel that provides data or transactions. It returns an OUT channel that will forward values from INPUT unless DONE is closed. In this way, this pattern merges two channels, done and transaction channels, into a single channel, out channel. If the done channel is closed, it gracefully shuts down. We start by creating an out channel to send data. Let's start a go routine that will wait for the done signal or the data. Inside the infinite loop, we use a SELECT statement to wait for signals from either DONE or INPUT. If DONE is closed, the GO routine terminates by calling RETURN. Otherwise, if a value comes from INPUT, we first check if it is not OK, we return. Else it's passed to OUT unless DONE closes during transmission. Finally, defer the channel closure to ensure the out channel is closed when the go routine ends, signaling the end of data. Here we will return the out channel. Next comes the T function. The T function splits the input data stream into two separate channels, out1 and out2. This pattern allows us to send the same data to two different consumers, in this case, our fraud detection and analytics pipelines. First, we create two out channels here. Next, we start a go routine. Here, we defer the closure of the out channels. We loop over values received from the input. This loop will continue as long as the input is open and transmitting values. The SELECT statement allows us to send each value to either OUT1 or OUT2, depending on which channel is ready to receive. This simple selection makes T a non-blocking function that splits the input data between two separate output channels. We finish the function by returning OUT1 and OUT2 as output channels. Consumers can now use these channels independently to receive the same data stream from input. Now we will create a function that simulates the stream of transactions. This function takes the done channel as the argument. It helps stop the generator gracefully. It returns a channel that stream integers. It creates a new random transaction amount every 100 milliseconds and sends it on the out channel until it reaches 200 transactions or the done channel signals cancellation. This loop generates transactions, creating a random integer each time to simulate different transaction amounts. If done is closed, the generator stops and announces its shutdown. Now we create functions simulating fraud detection and analytics pipelines. The fraud detection pipeline function analyzes each transaction for suspicious activity, identifying any transaction over 700 as suspicious. We use OR DONE to receive transactions from input 
but stop if done signals cancellation. For each transaction, we check if it's above 700 and print either suspicious transaction detected or normal transaction. When or done closes input, the loop exits and we print a shutdown message. The analytics pipeline function calculates the average transaction amount. As with fraud detection pipeline, or done is used to check done and receive transactions from input. For each transaction, it's printed and added to a running total. After all transactions are processed, the average is printed. The function ends with a shutdown message once done closes input. The main function ties everything together. We create a done channel to control shutdown. Transaction Generator generates transaction data, which is then split into two channels using T for fraud detection and analytics. Now, we run both pipelines, fraud detection and analytics pipelines. Both pipelines run concurrently, consuming their respective channels. After 10 seconds, done is closed. This signals all components to shut down. Finally, a one-second delay allows all pipelines to print their final messages before main exits, confirming all processes stopped. Let's see this program in action. The transaction generator starts generating data, and the pipelines start consuming it simultaneously. The prints show suspicious and normal transactions, as well as analytics prints. As soon as the done channel is closed, the pipelines stop. Here is the average calculated by Analytics Goroutine. The main thread is stopped here. And there you have it. This example shows how T can split transaction data into multiple processing pipelines, allowing each to work independently on the same data. The or done pattern manages cancellation, enabling a clean controlled shutdown of both pipelines when a stop signal is sent. This setup is particularly useful in real-time data processing applications where monitoring and analysis can operate simultaneously on the same data source. Like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more go tutorials. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.